us, right? You're able to observe it. So once you realize who you are, what you gotta do? Step on this side and teach your people. The kingdom of God is within you. You, you, you. Once you wake up and teach your people, the kingdom will come. No more do we have to get gunned down. No more do women have to be raped. No more do we have to hate each other. Y'all gotta see that. Stop saying, I want change. Do it. Everybody ain't gonna make it, brother. One third. One third of our people will make it. Two thirds will perish here in Babylon. Don't tell you nothing different, sis. We are the prophets of the Most High. Mind. What do we think 
our light is. We think our light is what? Our athletic ability. We think our light is what? Our singing ability. Right. We think our light is what? Bling, bling. Right. It's our bling, bling. Right. We think our light is how good we can play our, our musical instrument. Let's see what the light is according to the Bible. Give me Proverbs 6 and 23. Because everything must be precept upon precept. That's right. right? The light that you, that the, that the so-called white man taught you is pointless to God. God said that doesn't mean anything to me. Read that. Proverbs chapter 6. Verse 23, Mr. Yeah. Good, black man, this is the light that you must let shine before men. Read. For the commandments is a lamp. The what? For the commandments is a lamp. The commandments is a lamp. Mr. Good, brother. In the law is a, his light. And what? In the law is light. The laws of God are light. That's right. Now, I'm asking this. What are some laws that we should be keeping? What is today according to God? The Sabbath, right? Would y'all agree? You ever heard that before? Y'all heard that before? Okay. Now, in the Sabbath, how do we keep the Sabbath day holy? Because that would be letting our light shine, right? Us coming out here and teaching, this brother got a job, all of us got jobs, right? We could be making overtime today working on Saturday. But what do we say? We say, no, we got to keep God's law. Right. That's right. How do you keep the Sabbath day holy according to the Bible? So we can let our light shine. Not work? Okay, that's one. What up? You know? In the scriptures. In the scriptures. Okay, what's another? Huh? Prepare. Prepare? Okay, good, good, good. Now let's get scripture. Everything y'all said was good, right? Give me first Peter 4 and 11 first. Everything we say, we must back it up with a scripture, right? Because for over 400 years, guess what? What the white man is correct? For over 400 years, this has been fed to us, right? Hey, brothers, you ever seen this image before? Yeah. Right? Do you have any scripture to prove that Jesus Christ looks like this? No, right? So now, understanding that, we must have scriptures to back up what we say. First Peter 4 and 11. First Peter chapter 4 verse 11. Uh -huh. If any man speak. If what? If any man speak. Read. Let him speak as the oracles of God. The Bible says we must speak as the oracles of God, right? Now all of you gave your opinions on how we should keep the Sabbath day holy, right? Now we got to go to a scripture. You get what I'm saying? Because if not, we'll follow the white man Jesus, right? Alright, give me that extra. Let's see how God told us to keep the Sabbath day holy. Because we always want to be in accordance with the Most High God. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day. Do what? Remember the Sabbath day. The way you remember the Sabbath day is you must do something. It requires actions, right? For example, if it's your wife's anniversary, right? And I said, you got to remember that anniversary. Is that just for you to say, oh, it's the anniversary day? What comes behind you remembering? What comes behind you remembering that day? You got to celebrate. You got to do something, right? You got to have some action that shows I remember. When is your birthday? And somebody said, oh, I remember it was your birthday today. But you don't have no cake. You don't have no presents. Did they really remember that day? Just the same thing with God. God said, you got to remember my Sabbath day. We say, oh, yeah, today is the Lord's Sabbath. But what are the actions that show that we are acknowledging that it's the Sabbath day? You see that? Read. Read it remember my Sabbath, remember the Sabbath day uh -huh. to keep it holy. Now he's telling us exactly what we should do. We got to keep it holy. Holy means separate. It's something different than what you normally do. For example, like we said, what, what, what's the rumor that on, on a man's uh, birthday, right, if a man's married and he's older, what do they say going to happen on his birthday if he's married? He gonna get something from his wife, right? Cause normally he might not, normally they might not lay down. But guess what? It's his birthday. His wife makes sure he's taken care of, right? She remembers that it's his birthday. Christmas. If you remember Christmas, what's gonna happen on Christmas? Huh? Yes. Presents, right? You gonna put up the Christmas tree? You gonna have presents? If it's Thanksgiving, how do you remember Thanksgiving? You got a turkey. You can, you invite the family over, right? Now, let's see what God requires of us. Keep reading. Oh, six days shall thou labor. God says, the way you remember my day is six days you shall labor. Right. And do all thy work. All your work goes on those first six days. Read. But the seventh day. But on that seventh day. Read. Is the seventh of the Lord thy uh -huh. God. And in it, thou shalt do not do any work. God says, on my day, you don't do any work. That's one part of keeping the Sabbath day whole. So you were correct on that, right? But I'm backing up with scripture. What else do you do? Exodus 35 and 3. But that's not all. Guess what? 
What are the sayings of this book? What are the sayings of this book? John 6. John 6, verse 63. Read it out. It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that quickens. Quickens means change. Read. The flesh profits nothing. Uh, flesh profits nothing. Your flesh is your carnal wall. All right, read. The words that I speak unto thee. The what? The words that I speak unto the, you. The words, the saints, read. They are spirits. They are what? They are spirits. By you keeping these commandments, that is spirit. Read. They are life. They are life. When you keep the sayings of this book, the spirit of God is in you. That's which right. gives you what? Life. Which gives you life. All right? Give me a... Um, Proverbs 7 and 2. Because guess what? Right now, all of these people out here are in a dead state. They are in a dead state. Why? They don't know who they are. They don't know who their father is. They don't know who they are. And they don't know who their God is. You're dead when you don't do that. And ultimately, they don't keep the commandments of God. They do not keep the commandments. Read that. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Uh -huh. Read out. Keep my commandments and live. Do what? Keep my commandments and live. You see that? By you keeping God's commandments, you will live. You learn at a very early age. If you honor your father and mother, what's going to happen? You're going to get a long life, right? They get that from the Bible. All these wise tales, it all comes out of the Bible. It has a scriptural basis to it. Now, let's get, let's get some more uh, important information. Young man, how do you get to the kingdom of heaven? Okay, oh yeah, we never got to that. What's God's will? All praises. But you don't obey his commandment. Don't you say? All right. Now, give me 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. I'm going to show you a commandment that you're not keeping right now. All right? But Lord willing, you can do it. Lord willing, you can humble down and apply the scripture. That's what this Bible is all about. It's about examining ourselves and correcting ourselves. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Uh -huh. Read it out. But I will have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. So, each man, our head is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. You married? You got a girlfriend? Yeah. All right. God says that you are the head of that woman. Y'all ain't even. All right? It ain't 50-50. You are above that woman. All right? Read. And the head of Christ is God. Even Christ has a head. There's an order in everything. Read. Every man, praying or prophesying, uh -huh. having his head covered. Listen good. Read that again. Every man. Pray or prophesy, uh -huh. having his head covered. Read. Dishonoring his head. So, by you having your hat on, guess what you're doing right now? Dishonoring your You're dishonoring your head, right? So, what would be the wise thing for you to do? There you go. All praise. All praise, brother. Now, that is an example of repentance, all right? In the Christian church, you can never get repentance. Why? Because they never ask you to change. All they want is your money and you're good, right? That's all the Christian church wants. Guess what? We're not out here for that. We want change amongst our community. That's right. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22. I'm going to show you what God says about that action that you just did. God is pleased when that happens. All right? Read that. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22. Uh -huh. you know? And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight uh -huh. in burnt offerings and sacrifices. Read as in obey the voice of the Lord. Read. Behold, to obey. To what? To obey. To what? To obey. To obey the words of God, read. Is better than sacrifice. You see that? So what you just did was a beautiful thing in the outside of God. That's you right. understand that? Now, let's get another command. Bring it on. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Because guess what? You haven't been taught these things, right? Nobody ever told you when the Bible coming out, you're going to take your hat off, right? Nobody told you that. Nobody told you you ain't supposed to be shaving your beard according to the Bible, have they? They told you that, and you continue? But you got a job or something? You got to shave your beard off? Okay. We're going we to address that in a second. Read that. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Uh-huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. You are the children of Israel. Read. And bid them uh -huh. that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Read. Throughout their generation. Now, you might say, what are fringes? All right, fringes. You see the, uh, the man's shirt? All right. God says we have to put those at the bottom of our garments. Read. 
that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And upon that fringe, you are to put a ribbon of blue on it. All right, that's what God requires out of each and every one of us. In order for us to keep the commandments, those are the things we have to do to do it, to follow God's what? What did you say? To follow God's will, guess what? You got to put fringes on your garment. But guess what? Nobody ever taught you probably how to sew, right? No, right? And you said you got a girlfriend, she know how to sew? Yeah. She know how to sew? Okay, well, I'm afraid. Well, guess what? Somebody going to have to teach you how to put fringes on. In our church, I'll pray to the Most High. We understand these scriptures. Give me Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. I'm going to show you the role of the woman. So when you come in, guess what? Your wife, if you have a family, we can teach them and guide them how to be godly according to the Bible. The same way we teach y'all, the woman do the same thing amongst one another. According to the scripture, read that. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Uh -huh. The aged woman. The aged woman, read. Likewise, that they be in behavior as become becoming holiness. Read. Not false accusers. So, the woman, you, what we're going to read are characteristics of the aged woman. Read. Not giving too much wine. Not giving too much wine. We see that a lot in, amongst the young black women today. What do they do? They get drunk. They go to the club. They're getting in fights. They argue all the time. Read. Teachers of good things. The Bible says that the aged woman should be teachers of good things. Not on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram all the time. Read. That they may teach the young woman uh -huh. to be sober, uh -huh. to love their husband, uh -huh. to love their children, uh -huh. to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, uh -huh. good, obedient to their own husbands. Would you like that? You want your wife to be good and obedient unto you? How about you, brother? When you get married one day, you want your wife to be an obedient son to you? Now, the question is, how are we going to get these women into this uh, subjection period? How are we going to get them to obey this Bible. Give me Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Bring it up. I'm going to show you. Yes, exactly. The brother said we must teach them. For too long, guess what we've been doing? We've been expecting something that we never showed them or told them. But guess what? That ain't going to happen in John 15. It ain't going to never happen. God said there is no equality in a relationship. Did you know that, brother? Young man, come up, come up. Listen good. Read that. Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse 26. 22. Verse 22. Uh-huh. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Do what? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Right. You ever been married before? You haven't been married yet, right? But you would like that, right? If your woman will be in subjection unto you, guess what? When you tell her to do something, she doesn't. There's no arguing and bickering back and forth. That's what God says should happen. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife. The what? The husband is the head of the wife. Understand, you guys are the head of your relationship. But with much responsibility, all right? With much, I mean, with, so who much is given what? Much is required. Much is required. So you got to live up to that sense. You got to be able to teach it. You got to be able to nurture it. Read. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh-huh. And he is the savior of the body. Christ is the savior of the body. Read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. The same way we are subject unto Christ. Read. So, let the wives be to their own husbands. You see that? Now, the brother said we got to obey God's will, right? We said that's keeping of the commandments, correct? Now, if you leave here today and you go to any church besides probably a, a two or three churches, they're going to tell you that you don't have to keep God's laws. Have you ever heard that before, that God's laws are done away with? You heard that before? You heard that before? Brother, you ever heard that before, that God's laws are done away with? You haven't. So you believe we do got to keep God's laws? You do? Okay, good. Matthew chapter 5 and verse, I mean, yeah, Matthew 5 and 17. Now I'm going to show you how the Bible, how we know, how the Bible proves itself that we must continue to keep God's law. Alright, uh, regardless of what Pastor uh, Jenkins is teaching. Because Pastor Jenkins ain't coming out of the scriptures. I guarantee you. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Uh-huh. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Now if I say think not, what does that mean? Huh? Don't think. What'd you say? I'm sorry. Don't think. Don't think. Perfect. 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 Would you agree? Would you agree? If I say think not, that means don't think. Read. Or the prophet. Uh-huh. 
I am not come to destroy the law. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So the Bible says, think not, meaning don't think I what? Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So he said, don't think I come to destroy the law. So what we read about fringes, what we read about you taking off your hat when the scripture's coming out, what we gonna read about the beard, God said, don't think those things I've done away with. Read. Or the prophet. Uh huh. I am not come to destroy. God did not come to destroy. Read. But to fulfill. Uh oh. There we go. Everybody love that scripture right there in Christianity. They say Christ fulfilled the law, right? So now we don't have to keep the laws, right? So now, for example, yeah, I'm a father, right? I went to school, I got my degree. Am I going to say to my son, I fulfilled that? You ain't got to go to school and get a job now. Does that make any sense? No, right? So what did Christ say when he said I came to fulfill? He showed us the way. That's what that means. Does that make sense? If I do something great and I fulfill that, now I want you to do the same thing. Romans 13, all right? Bring it out. Romans 13 and 1. All right? Well, I'm going to show you out of the Bible that God says that we are to be in subjection unto the higher power. Read that. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Uh-huh. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. So God says that we are to be subject unto the higher power. For example, all right, when you go to work, right, what do you have? What do you have at work? Boss. You got a boss, right? Are you going to tell your boss whatever? No, you have a certain level of what? Respect. Because you understand they have the authority. They control your livelihood. Right? Read. For there is no power uh -huh. but of God. We understand that whoever we are in subjection unto, guess who put them in that place? God put those individuals in that place. So whether it's your boss, whether it's the police, God placed those people there to take care of them, to watch over them. Because if we don't have, if you don't have a police officer, if you don't have a, 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 a boss, what happened at the job if you ain't got the boss there? What's going to happen? What you want? People going to wreck shop, right? Same thing in the streets. If you don't have people out here governing the streets, chaos. it's going to be chaos, right? That's why we got to come out here as well, because we got to teach our people the law. Read. The powers that be uh -huh. are, orde are ordained uh, of what? God. Read that again. The powers that be uh -huh. are ordained of God. That's what a lot of people don't understand. The powers that be, the government, the, the security, they are ordained of God. God set those people up. You get that? Why do you think we have houses burning down and you read these stories about people climbing up the stairs and bringing them out? You think they did that on their own? That's the most high. Give me, uh, give me Proverbs 21 and 1. Proverbs right 21 and 1. I'm going to show you what God said about the authorities of this world. Read that. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. Uh -huh. The king's heart. The what? The king's heart. The king's heart, read, is in the hand of the Lord. Is in the hand of the Lord. Meaning the king is a ruler. Authority is in the hand of the law. The most I control is all that. All right? Now, go back to Romans 13. I'm a vision. And why are we teaching this? We are teaching this because this is helpful for our community. Right. These are the things that they don't learn in the street. Right. All right? We're not going to teach what NWA is saying. Talking about ethical. That's nonsense. Why would you want to destroy the people that are out there to save? You get what I'm saying? Read that. Romans chapter 13, verse 2. Whosoever, therefore, Resisted the power. God says, What? Whosoever therefore resisteth the power. God says, Whosoever resisteth the power. Read. Resist resisteth the ordinance of God. God says they resist the ordinance of God. So guess what? If the police pull up and they tell you to stop, they tell you to stop, right? And you keep going, who are you really disobeying? <laughs> there you go. You got good common sense. But our people don't get that. What happens? Police tell you to stop, but you do. You keep going, then you get shot. Now you want to argue with the police. What sense does that make? You see that? Now sometimes does unjust things happen? Absolutely, absolutely. But ten times out of ten, guess what? That individual that got shot, were they saints? Nope. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Cause give me uh, First Chronicles 16 and 26. I'm gonna show you what God says about the righteous of His people. The righteous of His people. First Chronicles 16 and 22. First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 22. Read that. Say to not, say, there you go. touch not mine anointed. Do what? Say, touch not mine anointed. So, what did God say? Touch not mine anointed. How is it that we go to the streets all over America, 
all over the world. How many people came back shot a day? Zero. We go to the worst conditions of our people. Right. The worst. We've been to Africa. We've been to Jamaica. We've been to the island. Guess what? We always come back. We've been to Trinidad and Tobago. The murder rates like five times what it is in the States. Highest murder rates in the world. Nassau. Nassau. And we return with no bumps, bruises, or scratches. Read that again. Say, touch not mine anointed. God says, touch not mine anointed. Read. And do my prophets no harm. And do my prophets no harm. Now, some of our brothers have died in this truth. Not while we out teaching, but they have died. Why did that happen? Isaiah 57 and 1. I'm going to show you. Because a lot of people, does God kill? No? Does God kill? Yeah? Does God kill? No? We write 32 and 39 first, then we're going to go to Isaiah 57 and 1. Because guess what? A lot of us think God is only good, right? God is good all the time. And all the time what? God is good. Let's see. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Uh -huh. See now. Listen good. We're going to show you out of the Bible that God produces good and evil. There's nothing that happens on this earth that is not ordained of God. Right. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Uh -huh. See now that I, even I, am he. I am he, we. And there is no God with me. There's no God beside the most high God. Read. I kill. I what? I kill. I what? I kill. Where you reading from? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Now what did you say, brother? You said God didn't kill, right? Does he kill? Huh? Read it again. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. Read it from the top. Read it nice and slow and loud for the brother. See now that I, even I, uh -huh. am he. I am he. He's talking about this is the most our God speaks. Read. And there is no God. There is no God. Read. With me. No God with me. Read. I kill. I what? I kill. Uh-huh. And I make a lie. Does God kill? God kills, right? Now, why does God kill? Isaiah 57 and 1. Alright, Isaiah 57 and 1. I'm going to show you something. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 1. Because all killing is not always bad. Sometimes the Most High does that for a reason, for a purpose. And we know for a fact why these killings are happening today. And we're going to go to that next. Read that. The righteous perishes, and no man lived into heart. It says the righteous perishes, and no man lived into heart. What's the saying in the word? The good die young. Even though those people that be dying young, that, that ain't got nothing to do with this scripture. But that's where it comes from. Read that again. The righteous perish, uh -huh. and no man led into heart. Read. And merciful men uh -huh. are taken away. Merciful men are taken away. Read. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. You see that? God says that the righteous are taken away from the evils to come. Right. So sometimes the most I would kill a man because guess what? The world that's coming is going to be a lot worse than what it is right now. Even, you might think you live, we live in hell now. Guess what? 10, 20 years from now it might be worse. And guess what? The most I say, you know what? I'm going to take that man right now while he's in a righteous state. You understand that? We so death ain't always a negative thing. Death is not always a negative thing. First Peter 2 and 13, all right? Bring that out real quick. All right, that Christ should suffer. Read that. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 13. Uh-huh. Submit yourself to every ordinance. What did the Bible say? Submit yourself to every ordinance. Every ordinance. What's the root word of ordinance? Order, right? What, what do they call this, this TV show? Law and what? Law and order. Who's it dealing with? The police. It says, First Peter, chapter two, verse thirteen. Uh huh. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. You see that? That's what we do up here. We're not men walking disorderly. We're not out here cursing or shouting anybody. We have to wake our people up. Right. Guess what? Is your Christian pastor out here? Is Creflo Dollar out here teaching our people to repent? Is he teaching our people to obey the powers that be? No. Guess what he's saying? Give me money, and I'll be happy. Right. Give me that. Put it in my pocket. You go do whatever you want to. Bring it up. I might bail you out. Not. He give you a dime. Read. For the Lord's sake. Well, hold on. Read that again. Submit yourselves unto the Lord for who? 
First Peter, two, two, verse 13. Read it from the top, all the way through. Submit yourselves. God says, submit yourselves. To every ordinance. To every ordinance, every high power. Read. Of man. Uh-huh. For the Lord's sake. He said, do it for the Lord's sake. Like we said earlier, the Most High God is in control of the nation. He is in control of your beliefs. He is in control of your government. He is in control of your judicial power. So, what do we do? We obey ourselves to those powers that be. You get what I'm saying? We'll never tell our people to do anything opposite of that. Go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 17. Because what we're teaching is wisdom for our people. That's These right. are the things that you're not going to get in the Christian church. They're too busy singing and dancing to actually open up the Bible. The Bible is the most important book you ever read. Jesus Christ had all the power in the world, right? When the Romans came and got him, did Jesus Christ fight against the police? No. No, he submitted himself. Why? He had to fulfill the law of God. Right. Because God says that we are to be in obedience. Read that. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Uh-huh. Recompense to no man. Evil for evil. Do what? Recompense to no man. Evil for evil. God says don't pay back anybody evil for evil. How many fights have you seen because people were murmuring against one another? A lot of them, right? Somebody stepped on your shoe. Somebody, uh, they, they, they might have cheated on your girlfriend or something like that. You want to get them back, right? You want to recompense evil for evil. Read that again. Recompense to no man. Evil for evil. Uh -huh. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Do, do what? Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So that's what we do. We do things that are honest in the sight of all men. Right. What's wrong with us out here reading the Bible to our people? You see any problem with that? You see any problem with that? Are we threatening anybody? No. We're here to teach our people that true nationality. Why? So guess what? So the police don't have to work so hard. So guess what? Our people don't sell drugs to one another. That's right. Our people don't steal from one another. Right. Our people don't kill one another. Right. That's why we out here. Read. If it be possible. If it be possible, read. As much as life in you. Uh-huh. Live peaceably. Do what? Live peaceably. Do what? Live peaceably. God says that you should live peaceably. Read. With all men. With all men. That's what God says. That's what our forefathers did. That's what we do. We live peaceably with all men. Are we out here with a Bible or with a bat? Right. With a Bible. With a Bible. But I'm going to show you the, the depth of this Bible, what a lot of people don't understand. Give me Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Bring it on. All right. This Bible is a beautiful book. This Bible can bring everybody together on one accord. But guess what? The Most High God is going to have order within the Bible. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Read that. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Uh -huh. For the word of God is quick. The word of God is quick. Read. And powerful. And powerful. These words are powerful. People are getting cut. We're not even talking to them. You get what I'm saying? Read. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah, yeah. Two minutes. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Read. Piercing even to the dividing stuff. To the uh, dividing asunder uh -huh. of soul uh -huh. and spirit. Of soul and spirit. That's how powerful this Bible is. If you use it correctly. That's why we are here. Like I told you before. This Bible is the only solution to the black Hispanic man's problem. That's the only way you're going to get single parent households. You're going to end it. What's right. the solution for single parent households? You got one? You got one? We got it. Hebrews 13 and 4. Really? We teach marriage to our people. Why? Because we don't want our people growing up with one, one, uh, one woman raising a man. That ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Read that. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 4, uh -huh. marriage is honorable in all. Read that again. Marriage is honorable in all. The Bible says that marriage is honorable in all. That's what we want for our brothers and our sisters. We don't want single parent households. We don't want baby mamas. We don't want poor mongers. Right. We don't want a uh, thought. Right. You ever heard of a thought? You see a thought before? God says he don't deal with thoughts. Read. And the bed under fire. And the bed is under fire. The bed is under fire. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, uh -huh. God will judge. But those that do not abide in those laws, statutes, and commandments, God will judge those individuals.
Shalom. Dus haar melden het vreemde. Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.